rather than repeat many of the messages you just heard, because we would obviously clearly agree with everything that's been said about the, uh, the way this technology can fundamentally alter the landscape as far as carbon emissions, just a few, few thoughts about you know, our role in this and why it's so important to us as the London Taxi Company. I think the first thing is London is the world's greatest city. It constantly renews itself and demonstrates itself to be able to appeal to new audiences, appeal in new time frames. And we're very proud to be part of that London landscape. From when our vehicle was first launched in its sort of current guise back in the you know, late 1940s, we've been part of the London sort of attraction. We've been very appealing to tourists, to business visitors. And we've established, with the help of others, the reputation for being the best taxi service in the world. And that comes from really three elements. Firstly, our vehicle, the only purpose-designed taxi in the world. Secondly, the regulatory framework that's created by TfL and enforced by TfL. And thirdly, and probably most importantly, the fact we have the best drivers, the drivers that know their city better than any other cadre of taxi drivers, and are also more trusted by the passengers than any other taxi drivers in the world. And we think that is a property that is worth retaining and a key part of London's future, as well as an important part of its past. Now, the environmental issues became a big challenge to everybody in the auto industry, and particularly to uh, companies operating in cities from the mid-90s onwards. And we have made an enormous amount of progress. The vehicles we're producing today are materially better in terms of tailpipe emissions than the vehicles we were producing 15, 20 years ago. You know, the recently announced uh, age limit on the older taxis is a good initiative by TfL to accelerate that process of replacing the older cabs with clean and new ones. And we've done well with things like the particulates, the small soot particles that everybody sees and occasionally feels. The cabs we're producing today generate 99.8% less of those than the cabs we were producing 25 years ago. Nitrous oxide is 80% down, so we've made good progress on these harmful emissions. What we can't do, because of the fundamental physics of our vehicle and the nature of hydrocarbon fuels, is address the CO2 challenge, and that is the next and the biggest one in terms of city environments and in terms of climate change, global warming. And the only way through that is to look for an alternative carbon-free fuel process. Now, I agree with Kit, all of the other technologies, the electric-based ones, have a role to play, and I agree that I think those are transitional technologies. And the key is to find a fuel that is fundamentally carbon free. Um, I've been involved with hydrogen throughout my career. Uh, when I first started training as an engineer, I was involved in hydrogen projects. Uh, thankfully for the profession, I stopped being an engineer a long time ago, by the way. Um, but hydrogen is the way forward. Uh, we think it's sustainable, it leaves a legacy for future generations of a clean air and a sustainable taxi. And quite frankly, and I really do believe this, it is really only the, the only way to go. So we're delighted to be part of this uh, program. I think what we bring is the recognition of our system. We also bring the fact that if hydrogen can be made to work in our taxi duty cycle, it really can be made to work in any vehicle cycle. So I'm delighted to be here, delighted to be part of this consortium, and I look forward to the next stage of this test, validating what we believe to be true about these vehicles and moving us forward to the next stage of the technology. Thank you very much. Thank you.